On this podcast, we like to discuss the most recent installment of a different series every show. The Impossible Stream marks the 8th slash 11th season return of the cult favorite animated sci-fi sitcom Futurama, developed by Simpson creator and writer Matt Groening and David X. Cohen. Now to start off this podcast, we both binged the first season of Futurama. I've always been aware of it, but I've never actually like sat down and watched the Simpsons like spinoff slash like its own thing, you know? I remember it ending though so clearly in 2013 and it really seemed like that was going to be it. I saw oh, it's ended. Even, it's ended a few times. But like being in Times Square, I remember seeing the future, there was like a Futurama poster and it was mocking This Is The End, the 2013 film. Mm. Except it, like with James Franco and Seth Rogen, it was the Futurama characters. And now it they're seemed... making fun of Fortnite or now they're <laughs> being implemented into Fortnite. It seemed like it was a definitive end for the show. Yes, and that is what a lot of fans thought. It, they said that the finale, the last finale before this one, before it was picked up again, felt like it was meant to be like never picked up again. Right. Like that's what they were expecting. However, here it is back on Hulu, back on FX, uh, year 2023, 24, 25 years after it first premiered. And uh, yeah, let's start off with this little trivia game. It's true or false. Pretty easy, right? Mm-hmm. Bender's first line in the entire show, bite my shiny metal ass, true or false? Uh, oh, that was when they were in, like, the suicide booth, I think. Uh, that's where I'm, you met him. I'm gonna go with true. It is true. David X. Cohen is only David X. Cohen because someone with his original middle initial, David S. Cohen, was already in the Writers Guild. True. True. Yeah. Bender was the only voice actor not to return for this revival. Oh, that'd be sad if that was the case. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's false. I'll go with false, too. It is false, but he did hold out for a good month. But yeah, he, he's my favorite. I think he's everyone's favorite character yes. in this show. So if they didn't get him, it feels like there would be no show almost. Even no, if you were to recast he, they, his voice. No, they were recasting his voice. I know. That's but, what made him jump back on because he was like, <laughs> oh, you're going to recast me. And then so maybe he thought he had a lot more uh, sway over the show or a lot more power than he actually did. I think did. he felt bad for the fans. Yeah, like, he just was it. like or maybe he felt like that was his only avenue to make himself look good at the same time as being like, you know what? I'm going to backtrack and actually take on this contract. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah. Leela was named after a character in Doctor who leela uh i'm gonna go with true yes as well that's true um i guess one of the early assistants um the actress who voices joan of arc in clone high was originally cast as leela before uh, katie seagal oh okay i'm gonna go with false that's true as well okay <laughs> all right and then the last one disenchantment's last episode was exactly one year one week from this premiere i'm gonna go through with that that's as false well. that, that is false? completely made up so you got most of them correct most of them were true uh, we watched the first episode here. Again, it's called The Impossible Stream. We've got our pros and cons. After cause... unfreezing, I have a quick summary. Oh, you do? Okay. After unfreezing time, Fry, Leland, and the Professor go back to 3023. We see... I time guess is frozen we're... for everyone, except Fry and Leela were able to like live out like until old age their own lives. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, then... it reminds me a little bit of Modoc in the second episode. It reminds me of Doctor Who, where like Amy Pond and uh, Rory get like stuck in the past, and then they end up just aging mm-hmm. up together. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been done a lot. But yeah, so they are given the opportunity to go back and back to where they were and live out, but they don't remember their uh, relationship. And yeah, Fry pledges, he's like back to being his old way. He pledges to watch every TV show ever made, somehow is able to do so and only needs to finish the final season of All My Circuits. Yes, with Calculon. All 13,020 episodes in one continuous binge. Mm-hmm. Do you want to jump into our pros first? Uh, you can start it off with a con or a pro. I'm going to start with the references. That's a pro for the show. Mm-hmm. It being 3023 instead of 2023, Oil of Omicron. I had actually just seen the episode with the aliens from Omicron. Yeah, I Atticus. also have references as a pro, so I can throw some on there yeah, sure, if you ahead. run out. No, 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 I, have, I have Atticus Finch also being the lawyer at the very end. We don't hear him, but I had also just seen the episode for that as well. That was not who that was, I don't think. That, that was a different him? bird. They, they have plenty of bird lawyers, but I'm pretty sure that that's not the Atticus Finch. Well, one. Fry, I at least know in the first season, he always wanted to watch every TV show. That was his on-running joke he was always just on the couch wanting to see everything so Mm -hmm. i thought that them starting it off with this uh plot was funny and so also fulu instead of hulu i found to be a funny name what are some of the references that you had yeah so the show is well known it's it's basically nerd comfort food Mm -hmm. for that you can freeze frame on things and you'll see it's obviously they're going to reference back to their own television show from beforehand which i think those are the things that we're talking about yeah but i was talking about more like references to like other tv shows when it got to the tv guide and also the um like the hulu or fulu as you said 
said, um, homepage. They had Mets vs. Godzilla. They yeah. had the uh, it, um, Truthbusters, regular Ghost, Coast to Coast. Uh, instead of Disenchantment, they had Disenpantment, Downton Crabby, uh, Better Call Cthulhu, <laughs> uh, play, Plaid Programming. Um, let's see, The Queen's 8-Bit, <laughs> The Quiet Place Live. That seems the like that would be fun. <laughs> uh huh. I uh, see. It, yeah. it reminded me a lot of Joan is awful. I actually had that as my second point. It's kind of a four parter, but also when you had uh, the Fulu, the actual shows there as well. It was Slurm Dog, Millionaire, Stranger Font, Smelly in Paris, Geiger King, The Clamp Maid's Tale, How I Met Your Smeezar, Only Murders in the Hover Dome, The mm-hmm. Scary Mirror. I found that to be so meta, just because again, Joan is awful, The Black Mirror, and then them <laughs> deciding to make fun of it there as I well. I like I like next week to yesterday. Instead of, uh, I didn't even see last that Last week one. tonight, we have next week yesterday. Um, so, yeah, but this isn't the first time we've seen shows like to reference other shows. So I'm going to go into one of my cons, okay. actually. Uh, the older this show gets, the less unique it becomes. I agree that with that. That might sound like it's just common sense, but I'm not talking about it like uh, it's it's aging out of its like the, I'm, I mean that other shows are catching up. So when mm-hmm. it, it didn't like pioneer animation, obviously yes. the Simpsons was the thing that like really ushered forth so many cartoons of the nineties, but it was early enough and clever enough to feel distinct at the time that it came out. And now through no fault of its own, except for the fact that it's been off the air, it's stacked against so much more competitive field of animated sci-fi cartoons yes. and also revival uh re- re- revivalized or revitalized cartoons like animaniacs uh which is very meta um then of course you have rick and morty final space solar opposites close enough clone high uh disenchantment simpsons is always going to be there and then even tear along the dotted line which is that italian show that got such a claim on netflix where the guy is just constantly making meta humor about like what's going on in the television show it's hard for me to look at futurama and and see it as as spectacular as it was when it first came out for that specific reason i 100 yeah. percent agree with you i think that's the biggest problem for the show also i just see it as kind of an unfair con but after seeing the first season where the characters were so well defined in Futurama and this is going to happen with any TV show it seems like now that we're in season what 9 or 11 that you were talking about 8 or 11 because it depends on if you trust the way the discs were were sent out right because I remember that the first season was supposed to be like 13 episodes but then some people were saying that the first season also ended in the second season (laughs) yeah Fox presented it out of order and then like I think certain episodes were shown later but also when the disc sets were sent out that they were they were different so it it, happens with every show though the (laughs) the characters the characters seem like now they are just one trait when before it's like Bender and now he's just a complete dick at least in the first season okay so you are talking more about how the show is getting less unique because it's it's long and tooth like yes. the writers have actually hurt the show i was talking about it more just no fault of its own type of issue but i will say for a pro that goes along with that um it doesn't have to be better or more successful sure. than all those other shows that i just listed especially in this day and age the characters themselves they become memes they, they're, they're staples um if people know who they are they can recognize them and so it has an audience out there and even though they they were like originally thought to be too mean and immature like the producer Producers, they had to talk to Graining and then Graining argued with them. <laughs> and like it's that's why I got canceled a couple times and, and who knows what. But like at this point, it seems like all they have to do is stand pat and provide at least semi like feed that nerd culture, but also um, just give you kind of normal content. It doesn't need to be better than Rick and Morty every single time. It doesn't need to push the boundaries. And that's why I think that they went with this episode to be the first one, because the binge, that being the main plot line, that's what I did for the first season. I'm sure that the writers knew that that was what a lot of people were going to do, at least rewatch some of Futurama. And that's actually why I have as one of my pros. And at the end of this episode, they kind of say they have a no fucks given like the purpose Mm -hmm. where like by the end of the episode, you realize none of it mattered. Yeah. Right? Like they were just like, whatever. It's <laughs> also the next episode. Strangely relevant to today. I strangely. know. Strangely. I mean it was pretty... No, but you but you have like the writers not getting as much credit as they want to be or like kind of burned out. But that's part of why they wrote it. They could see that coming. I know, but it, like also episodes being made at like a uh, record fast rate, that's one of those uh jokes that they're able to do it in like two times 
speed and how there's just so much content out there that like everyone's trying to catch everything. That's a pro for you? Yes, that was a pro for me. So, was that a con for you? Yeah, because this felt like a try hard episode for me. Mm -hmm. Like it coming back, they stuffed it with all the fan favorite references, characters, callbacks. You got Nixon, Slurm, the devil, Hypnotoad, Nibbler. Um, <laughs> and it makes fun of itself, but it's also making fun of the network that brought it back. And then it's also making fun of streaming. And then it's also dissing fan culture that's like so content gluttonous at this point that it wants to binge everything. It's also making fun of PC culture. It's making fun of TV executives. It's making fun of the writer strike, AI, tech, Tesla, NFTs. Um, <laughs> it steals basically season one's plot line with having to produce a TV show on the fly. You remember there was the um, Ali McBeal one? Yes. Right? The, the right. lady with, who wears the short skirts and the aliens come down and then they insist on seeing an episode of that it. That was and actually. Has to make it up. That was one of my uh, cons for the show. You're talking about when aliens attack the episode in season one that, like you said, yeah. Ali McBeal. And then in the end, they just pretend that, like, again, nothing mattered and still tried to keep it grounded, you mm -hmm. know? But, like, it just felt like they were trying to stuff too much into this and it wasn't enough that was funny. It didn't feel like the characters were doing much different. Um, and it didn't feel like the plot of the episode was, like, a classic at all. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I think one of the big reasons is had Futurama maybe done what a lot of Hulu sh shows do nowadays, or FX shows, released one, two, maybe even three episodes, I think that would have been better because, like you're maybe. saying, I found this as more of, like, a fan service episode. Mm -hmm. It was just done so that it, it feels like it was um, kind of making the fans more into it, but by doing so, I feel like you didn't actually get a good plot from it. And that's it. been a major complaint because a lot of fans were really really, really happy with how they ended it the last time because they knew that it gave them the door to bring it back, but that they would only do so if they had somewhere to take it and that they wouldn't just like keep on playing loosely goosey with whether or not the show was going to return. I saw an article that said that this episode ended up ruining the finale. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, read that time. I don't think that's the case. In fact, I, I disagree that maybe they shouldn't have put out multiple episodes. Like they should. I like that they put out one episode. So many shows these days stick out three episodes to premiere. But, but it feels like, yeah, I can wait on this. My I don't problem, need to binge my this My problem season. with it is this is the episode we were given. If we were given a good first episode, I wouldn't really care that much. But I thought it's it was, like, I thought was all right. So I thought, what, so I what would you give it a 6 out of 10. I, for me, I'm going to have to go harsh on it, and actually it doesn't pass. I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. That's close enough Because it's mine. like, yeah. is this show funny? Yes. Am I going to watch the rest of it? Yes. Am I glad it's back on air? Yes to all that stuff. But so many different TV shows now do the same exact plot. Recent examples are like Joan is Awful, like we talked about already, Clone High, the iCarly reboot, Arrested Development, the other two, that 90s show, WandaVision, the Santa Clauses, and several other shows that have been bought back and there's a billion decades. cartoons coming out it's, all the time it's just them making fun of themselves and hoping that putting in enough references and almost over uh like overindulging the viewer it hopes that that will somehow work but this didn't feel like anything other than a bad episode of futurama but that it still deserved to be in the running for future like if you just randomly saw this while you were watching a um the tv play just a marathon right yes it wouldn't feel out of place right so what I'm thinking is like, because it's still, that's all that this is going to end up being in the future is it's just another season to add into the SpongeBob universes <laughs> of like where they just keep on Nickelodeon it and, and playing it constantly. So, so what I'm trying to say is like, this doesn't have to do what those other shows are, which is define themselves and make themselves something new that people need to jump aboard on. This just needs to add content to what's already there. It needs to do what The Simpsons is doing, which is adding more and more content so that later on, uh, when people are just watching it for fun, it's basically what it's making fun of with the All My Children thing, where it's just going to be another set of episodes in there. I, I'm sure we're going to get better ones as the season goes yes, on. Yes, that's, why, that's yeah. why I'm going to wait for the whole entire season to come out. Because uh, I think that Futurama is a TV series that's better when you binge it. Rather than like watching it episode <laughs> I by don't know episode, about that. I, I think that you can watch an episode, take a, a year long break, go back to it, and watch another episode. That's how I did it for the longest time. It wasn't until I sat down and watched the first season I was like, okay, this also works. But again, like the amount of jokes that fly by, it's it almost it benefits it to take your time with it. I, I don't think you need to like cruise through this thing too quickly. Um, I'll go to my last con because it's a fairly small one. Mm -hmm. um, 
when they stuck Fry into that bin suit, which looks like the suit from Upload, where like you can <laughs> piss in it and you can also like eat in it, and it's just yeah. keeping you alive while you're it's locked directly into your visual cortex. I think enough people know where the visual cortex is, and they have enough Harvard people writing on this, where it's like, why did they drill to the side of his head and not the back of his head where his occipital lobe is? Like, yes, there are nerves that go in between your eyeballs to those uh, to the occipital lobe, but like, why the visual cortex itself is in the back? And so, <laughs> so, so I that, don't. So your it main was annoyed to me. Is the science <laughs> that like when they drilled it in there? Yes, the science is what the show does well, or it's supposed to do really well. And they drilled in maybe the cartoon characters because they have like four fingers, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of the reason their brains are set up differently. <laughs> but I think they've shown the brains of like Simpson characters and stuff, and it's, it takes place in the same world, and they should have a very similar brain to us. Between this and Disenchantment, which one would you say was better? Because you watched Disenchantment. The Disenchantment. Yeah, because okay. over the over the years it's grown on me it actually has some of the same voice actors I, I'm the guy who, play, who plays bender i think is also playing the king the 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 dad of the main character right, i think i remember i think i remember doing that when i was doing the research and eric it. andre's like devil is very similar to bender you know it, it always seems like they have those characters though at least in mad graining shows yeah i mean like you can see, you pick out the same thing with like uh, the simpsons character as well so it seems I, like he always goes with the same type well, they of They had trait. a crossover. They had a crossover with Futurama I remember that. a long time ago. Yeah. They also have, like, um, I think better visuals in uh, Disenchantment because it came out later when it was on Netflix. And uh, it, and with this, they've always mixed 3D animation and 2D animation. Which I, is always, cool. I always like that thing, though, because you can tell, especially with, like, the intro for it. That's something that I think that Futurama is kind of different with than yeah, any other it was At the time that it came out, it was a little different because they were able to save cost-cutting. It was a cost-cutting measure um, that you didn't have to animate animate the the 3d part of it obviously mm -hmm. and so like those sketch artists didn't have to work as hard and, and they could do like some crazy big explosions and stuff the integration of it has gotten better over the years and so now when other shows do it um it, it looks it looks better that's why i'm saying disenchantment still has the key there they've also done like steampunk episodes of futurama mm -hmm. several times so that's also very similar to disenchantment yeah a, a graining show you can always tell when it's kind of his his animation you can style. tell when it's graining yeah yeah uh, but overall uh this is decent I would definitely recommend that people check out this season. If and you're a huge fan of Futurama, I think that people are already going to watch. That's like, not why I'm thing. recommending it to huge fans. I'm recommending it to just regular cartoon fans. The The thing that annoyed me about them making fun of the producers so much and, and making fun of Hulu, because mm -hmm. um, you said that was a pro of yours, it, they, they've just done it in so many shows recently. Silicon Valley would have it in their intro. Curb Your Enthusiasm literally had Hulu executives there. So did Reboot that show uh barry um when they yeah. were making fun of uh, their own production network i don't think it was hulu in that one but like the idea of making episodes fake tv executives have been around in everything lately and it just feels like that's that's just hitting it uh the the Killing a, what was it, the dead horse? Not beating killing, a dead beating horse. Beating a dead horse, yeah. And, but I did like the joke where they went into the writer's room and uh, Bender ended up like replacing them, sort of like an AI, because <laughs> he's a, um, he is a robot. And the one writer who was dead with his head in the thing was <laughs> Eric Horstead, an actual writer on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the type of freeze frames that you get. I, I know what you're talking about with the Hulu thing, though. Even one of my cons was that it feels like it's always advertising itself when it's doing plot lines like this. <laughs> so I see where you're coming from with that. It is that. what it is. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, that'll leave it for this one. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye.